This video is going to be all about welding aluminium and the uh, different uh, processes we may use for welding aluminium, how they're different to each other, and basically um, advantages and disadvantages, pros and cons, cons of each uh, process. Uh, many metal fabricators uh, struggle with aluminium. It's a bit specialized, not because it's any difficult, but because aluminium is not so common material, so not many people have enough practice on it. So let's start with the MIG welding process. It's a lot better to use a wire feed unit that have four rollers, so the wire can be pressed nicely. And also you'll see that both rollers, top and bottom, have a groove in it. So the contact the contact area in between roller and the wire is a lot bigger because there is a groove in it. Uh, it's advisable to use 1.2 mil uh, wire for uh, using the MIG simply because the wire on the MIG much on aluminum sorry uh, much more softer so when you're trying to feed this wire over long p uh, distance then you start to get issues with the wire feed common problem the wire just bends or uh, you create an, uh, bird's nests in the wire feed simply because the wire is simply too soft on this particular machine what we have we have um, Push pull system, which is mean, which means there is uh, three sets of roller. Two sets of rollers you see um, in the wire feed, and there is another additional set of roller which is fitted inside of a MIG handle. So what you will see is the wire sticking out. I'm and I'm using little uh, diamond files simply to file off uh, sharp uh, edges. The reason why I do so is because the liner for um, for a MIG torch is actually made out of Teflon and uh, I don't want any sharp edges or uh, anything sharp that can gouge into that um, Teflon liner and start making scars inside of it. Plus push-pull system is actually quite long so it's 10 meter long and because the wire going to be traveling uh, so far I don't want this wire to be sticking anywhere and causing any restrictions so I just really want to have nice and ra a round end on the wire as you can see the torch line uh, stretched out so the line is pretty much straight easiest route for a wire to travel and uh, you can see how long it will take to feed whole 10 meters of uh, wire into the torch um, now it doesn't mean that uh, any other setup with a regular torch will not work but this system was designed particularly for doing aluminium so you have two drive rollers in the wire feed and one drive roller in the torch handle and basically it's called push-pull system because wire feed pushing and the handle pulling the wire as well and this allows you huge amount of flexibility you can move around you can uh, go into awkward places and uh, this is you can this is uh, how the uh, handle works and you can see a little motor inside so there is a small liner in the torch as well just a brass liner pop it back in and uh, you see there is a same again drive roller and the compression roller which uh, help to drive wire right through it is still very common misconception that uh, different welding types uh, give you different quality it is not true um, if uh, welding carried out properly regardless of uh, type uh, you still get really good um, quality pretty much same quality out of different welding types it is true to say that different welding types uh, suited a lo little better for different types of joints uh, for example uh, MIG welding suits really well to fillet welds and the um, TIG welding would suit really well to uh, outside corner joints and um, you also can say that MIG suits really well for big uh, runs, big surface areas, uh, really long runs where you don't have to start and stop uh, for a long distance and your uh, TIG welding would suit a lot uh, smaller components um, something where you can actually get around very easily and get into tight spaces and tight corners and so on this is a base flange which is a part of a mast which it will be fitted onto the fishing boat and as you can see from arc shot it is a vertical up and welding on aluminium and it flows really really well 
from a sound you can hear that uh, it started off little slightly hotter and then I managed to lower down our amperage and um, there is controls for that on, on this particular torch but it helps in this sort of situations because um, to start with you need to have quite lots of uh, power to heat up aluminium and then once aluminium heats up and starts heat starts to travel quite fast you need to reduce your amperage because you're becoming too hot on the on the run as i mentioned the fillet welds it worked really well for uh, for me in pretty much any position vertical up or um, horizontal the other thing which uh, works really well for me is uh, filling the gap as you can see in here this uh, gap been left in there so we can actually get deeper uh, penetration on the on the part and all of this can be easily filled up with the MIG. Without doubt you could um, weld this with a TIG as well you could even back project and make it uh, absolutely 100% perfect uh, however you've got to bear in mind that um, the welding should be done to be sufficient for a design of a joint for a configuration of that joint and in this particular application we are welding uh, 8 mm or 3 8 aluminium plate into 3 inch pipe which is a uh, half inch uh, wall so there's, there will be plenty of material deposited without questions it will be as strong as it needs to be uh, so as you can see bridging the gap for the MIG is not a really a problem and it's very easily done without uh, any extra hassle Quite often people see black suit after uh, welding with the MIG and they're uh, trying to work out what's, what's the reason and the black suit is a really good indication that you're running just a little bit too cold just a little touch too cold once you bump up your amperage or voltage on the MIG would be more correct to say the voltage and then uh, you will see all of this disappear well you have a choice of either lifting up your uh, voltage on the MIG or simply preheat parts a little bit to give it some little extra heat in it you will see that on the second run we'll have a totally different picture all together and the weld will come up a lot more cleaner because uh, there's already some heat in the part from the previous run again you can hear that uh, I lift up amperage a little bit more as well and uh, the, the sound of arc is totally different you'll see there is very very minimal sputter and really good transfer rate for filling up gaps or pushing quite a lot of material other methods of um, welding aluminium like friction welding or even uh, DC stick welding I don't have any stick rods for aluminium I don't really use them and uh, so that I can show you a video and I can't really discuss them much uh, however friction welding is something that is uh, has its own place in the mechanized uh, production lines where things need to be assembled together quickly and they can be friction welded so in this part uh, you will see exactly what I meant by different uh, configuration types for joints can benefit from different uh, types of welding so this particular one I'm gonna weld with a TIG this AC TIG and you will see that um, because of the shape of a joint, outside corner joint, it flows really nicely. However, if you pay attention to the time it takes to make such a little uh, weld, you will see that uh, it goes into no comparison to when you compare it to make welding. It is quite possible to increase the speed when you have um, people who's really experienced with the, what they're doing and the, with the type of work that they've done quite few bits the productivity can go quite high up however it's still the same thing applies to MIG welding as well and on the MIG welding you can zap really really quick however on, on this particular type of joints it makes total sense to use two different types of uh, welding to achieve uh, good results if you paid attention you probably realized that I was using the long up slope and long down slope settings on the TIG to achieve a better control in the heat input during the this welding and here's how the uh, joint looks as you can see there isn't that much ripple simply because the feed was quite smooth the next welding process for welding aluminium that I would like to speak about is the open flame welding process 
and it is one of the most underrated welding processes uh, overall simply because it has huge benefits along with the obvious um, shortcomings so what I've see, you see me putting on is a specialized flux for welding aluminum the parts that we have is a piece of aluminum which is one millimeter thick uh, which is what about 40 sow in the metric is an imperial and um, basically we'll try to make a little fillet and weld this with the open flame the, the major uh, disadvantage of this welding process is huge heat affected zone and uh, on the same material it can create quite a lot of distortion on a big heavy material you will need a lot of heat in order to heat up the whole part before you will actually get to the welding temperature so it's not really that effective however this welding method is absolutely phenomenal especially if you have to weld something really really thin outside in the um, situation where everything exposed to the weather and you haven't got any ability to shelter yourself properly and uh, basically any wind condition you can work and it. the only thing what you can work is in the rain because rain will wash away your um, welding flux welding flux comes as a powder and you just mix it with the water and then you can brush it on uh, so if you have a rain obviously it will wash out the flux and you won't be, be able to do welding as you can see my joints just opened up a little bit I have about 2 mil gap on the bottom of it so my intention is to put the bottom tack because I'm not 100% confident in the top tack that it will last so I want to put a bottom tack and um, I will start welding from bottom to the top and you'll be able to observe it um, if you weld in with the clear glasses it's going to be quite difficult because the the whole thing will just bright up quite a lot you can see the, the gap shining through so it's a lot better to weld with the dark tinted glasses you can see a lot better with them so basically speaking you can't really see it that well on the video however when you melt aluminium you've got to use your uh, filler rod uh, which is just ordinary TIG road for all welding aluminium um, you've got to use it to f uh, move around and to distort the puddle a little bit you've got to agitate puddle because uh, there is no electro ele electric frequencies from from arc that will agitate puddle for you what you also see me is every so often my road will heat up a little bit too much before the material is ready to absorb the um, the fill road so I will kind of shake a little bit uh, the welding road a little bit and drop the excess aluminium away from it and once you start melting in what you've got to do you've got to agitate that puddle with a um, with a torch by, by performing the open flame welding on aluminium and what you achieve you can actually weld really really thin because you can really control heat input by changing the uh, size of a nozzle and by changing mixture of a gas and distance as you can see it a little better now the agitation of weld puddle and it flows really nicely bear in mind it's not something that uh, I do every day so you do lose a little bit of a nug to it and uh, so it's not not the best um, no, yeah it's the kind of glasses I was using so it's not the best kind of uh, bead as you can get out of it but uh, it's, you can get pretty good so what I'm going to do I'm gonna cut this in half and I will try to show you you know how much penetration there is and bear in mind it's only one millimeter aluminium so it will be quite difficult to show exactly how everything penetrated it is absolutely possible to weld one millimeter, one millimeter aluminium with TIG and you can weld it even smaller you know, like 0 0.3 millimeter of uh, aluminium with the TIG as well however um, when you look into combination you know when you need to have reasonably good strength of a joint and it needs to be delivered in uh, difficult uh, conditions like uh, as I described already then uh, this particular um, scale of um, welding aluminium with the gas welding or open flame welding and um, how you like to call it then this is just another useful skill that you may have in your skill set that you can apply whenever you need to
and it's handy because it it can get you um, can get job done and can get you out of difficult situation. I often say we don't do welding; we provide solution to the problem. And uh, one of the example of the jobs that we done is the removal of uh, anchor uh, fluorescent anchor points for um, University of Aberdeen on their campus at Gardi. And you can see that the anchor points that they were actually bolted to the structure of a building and then had the wire system running in between them had to be removed and all aluminum roof which also was around about 0.7 mil thick had to be welded patches there was 52 of them and uh, basically new hatches fitted all sorts of things like this and the gas welding uh, of aluminum or open flame welding of aluminum is a skill that was absolutely necessary for that job.